Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. This week we're going to talk about a United States native, Notropsis lutepinus, or the yellowfin shiner. You guys may know them from my 150 gallon Asian Hill Stream Aquarium. And they are absolute stunners with incredibly variable coloration, depending on what they're eating, water changes, and some other factors. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. As you can see, these guys are absolute stunners. The one that's eating the pellet or the fish we're talking about today. Now the yellowfin shiner is extremely common in nature, um, often found in shallow streams and ditches in North Carolina, South Carolina, all the way up through Georgia. They get about three inches long or seven and a half centimeters and have a black stripe that extends from their mouth to the end of their caudal fin, as you can see in that one right there. They are extremely variable in color. Mine have less yellow and more white in their fins, but it's not uncommon to see a thin neon strip right above that black stripe that shows up in any of those colors, yellow, green, or red. And the same can be said for the color in their fins. Now the males fire up like this after a big cold water change, uh, during feeding, and as part of the breeding process. It's really, really incredible to see them all fired up in the aquarium because the brightness of their fins is visible from across the room. Males will also get a bright red colored body during this time as you can see that and <laughs> as you can see in these guys as well. Now apparently, I mean I've never bred these, but what I read on nanfa.org is that they might actually require bluehead chub nests in order to spawn. That being said, I have had success breeding other Natropsis outside with marble nests, so I may give these guys a try as well. They are summer spawners. So this will work out perfectly. I'll move them out this spring when it's a bit cooler, let things heat up, and see if we can't get them breeding. They, co they come from areas with flowing waterways and a lot of rocks, so they've done really, really well in my Asian hill stream tank, and they make exceptional aquarium fish. Um, they're extremely outgoing, really easy to feed, absolutely beautiful, very peaceful, not at all nippy, and just incredible fish. I think they're particularly well suited in a hill stream aquarium with fish like I have in here. Gobies, white clouds, larger danios, uh, as well as many many loaches. I haven't found them to be at all nippy or aggressive, just really really entertaining and interactive. They very much seem to recognize my presence in the fish room and readily come to the glass at feeding time as you can see. All in all, I think they'd make an exceptional choice for an aquarium that has a lot of rock work or, or even a ton of branchy driftwood like I have in here, as they do not mind high light. They do appreciate some good structure, however, so having areas of tangles of wood or jumbles of rocks is very much appreciated. As you can see, these guys are just absolutely stunning fish. As always, let me know below if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or questions. I do hope to focus on some more American native fishes this year. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things now.